global warming is actually good. Okay. There has been some global warming in the past uh, 200 years. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, if you read Dickens, he talks about snowy winters in London. Okay. That's in the early 19th century. That's no longer the case. But has this been bad? Okay. It's late in the growing season, okay. and it increases net global rainfall. And in as much as CO2 at, uh, in the atmosphere has increased, it accelerates the rate of plant growth. And there's no doubt about that whatsoever. We have photographs taken from orbit since 1958. And they show that the, during, since 1958, the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere has increased by about 20%. The rate of plant growth on this planet has increased by 15% since 1958. And I'm not talking about agriculture. That's done much better. That's got technology behind it. I'm talking about wild plants, forests, past uh, meadows, jungles. Okay? And there's no doubt that it's CO2 that's doing it because you can repeat the experiment in terrariums. Now, if we had been reducing the CO2 content of the atmosphere, then there'd be a case here, okay, because we'd be harming the biosphere. But we're helping the biosphere. We're linking in growing season, increasing the CO2 available for plant growth, which means increasing the amount of food available for animals. We're making the Earth a more fertile planet. Now, carbon is, of course, the primary source of energy. It's also the primary source of materials. Everything that you use is either made of carbon or made with carbon. Okay? Food, clothing, both natural and synthetic, wood, plastics, uh, you know, all these things are made of carbon or else they're made with carbon, like iron, with glass, and so forth. If solar energy was economically competitive, let's say cheap solar energy was made possible, which is obviously something that is in principle possible and, and uh, I believe will happen within a few decades. Uh, the, it will lower the cost of energy. That will increase humanity's carbon use. Okay? Because it will be cheaper to do things. Um, so, and that will be good. If, if the fracking makes natural gas derived uh, fuels for cars cheap and it lowers the cost of oil. U.S. employment, not unemployment, employment will go up. World employment will go up. The world economy will expand. Carbon use will increase. This is good. The carbon is not used up. Nothing is used up. What you're doing when you accelerate the economy is you're increasing the rate at which it circulates. You're quickening the circulation. When we take carbon out of the ground that has been locked up as fossil fuels and we put it in circulation in the biosphere as CO2, we're doing the biosphere a favor. It's like taking money that people have hidden under the mattress and getting them to spend it and putting it out to the economy to make things go round and round faster. Okay, there's some significant evidence that damage to the ozone has been caused by the use of chlorinated uh, uh, fluorocarbons, which are specialty gases used in refrigerants. Uh, and there was a fuss over that, and treaties were signed, and those gases have been phased out, and that problem is being reversed. I, and I think that, that was an intelligent thing to do. All environmentalism is not bad. There is what is called practical environmentalism, which is addressing real problems for the purposes of benefiting human beings. Okay. And so, yeah, don't dump the toxic waste in the reservoir. And don't send all kinds of toxic pollution up the smokestack. And regulations to deal with that are appropriate. Okay. However, there's another kind of environmentalism, which is ideological environmentalism, which is anti-humanism, which is to use instances of human damage to the environment, whether real or exaggerated or completely imaginary, Okay, in order to make a case against humanity. And that's what the global warmists have done. Right now, the Department of Energy is much more interested in carbon sequestration that does not push oil out of the ground than carbon sequestration for enhanced oil recovery, because you can use carbon dioxide to help push oil out of the ground, and there's actually a shortage of CO2 available for such purposes. They're not willing, or 
they're very reluctant, to put it that way, to fund research in that area where they're, they're funding all kinds of things to put it into salt formation. Because you say, well, isn't this crazy? Don't we want more oil? Well, and no, we don't actually. No, the, 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 so the idea is that these ideas then shape the consciousness of people who will sh actually implement policies.